Are you are you all right? Are you comfortable? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, now we are getting into the fourth module of the course, and this module you may write is called morphology. Okay, we began with we began with. design features of we began with design features of language Then we looked at the ways of production of speech sounds. We began with the design features of language, how language is a unique system of communication, unique to human beings, unique among human beings. Then we looked at production of speech sounds, how human beings produce different kinds of speech sounds. Then we looked at organization of these speech sounds beginning today we will spend some time looking at principles of word formation. Okay. Uh, you might remember what this subject is called, what is the name of the subject which studies production of speech sounds? Phonetics. phonetics. What kind of phonetics? We looked at articulatory phonetics, what is that subject called which looks at organization of speech sounds? Phonology. Then we looked at phonology and now we are going to look at morphology the formation of words, how words are formed in natural languages. Is that all right? Are we together? In all of these cases, I have just given you brief overview, spoken of some principles and given you references to books. Please look at those books, do some exercise given in those books or elsewhere and you will profit a great deal. Okay. You will not only understand your own language better, you will not only understand language used by others better, you will get an insight into how nature organizes various phenomena, you know, how those things function. You will have an understanding of the system underlying natural processes. Okay. What is morphology? Let us see. Morphology is the study of word formation. You know, in any language, we have, we have ways of forming new words out of existing words. Okay. We do not know how any language was created. 
we know little or nothing about the origin of language, just as we know little or nothing about the origin of mankind, we do not know similarly much about the origin of languages. We know that languages have words. We also know that in each language, there are ways of forming new words out of old words or forming new words out of other existing resources. Look at some words here on this screen. You have a word called prince. You know the meaning of the word, that English word, do not you? Yes or no, please? Yes, yes sir. We know the meaning of the word prince. Do you know the meaning of the word street? Yes, sir. Yes. And you know prince and street together can give you prince street, which is a third word which is neither prince nor a street. It is not that only princes can walk there. It is not that that street is the prince among his streets. Okay? It is just another street is the name of a street, maybe a better street than others in the town or the city. So, that gives you the third word. Similarly, you know, you know the meaning of the word ladies, of course, right? You know the meaning of the word tailor. But ladies tailor is, is another word. What we are doing is we are putting two known words together to make a new third word. Okay? Or there may be other ways, you know. We know when we are happy. We also know when we are not happy. So, for not happy, we can have another word. And how is this word created? We have a full word called happy and we have added something before happy, which is the opposite of happy, which is not happy. What is that word? What is that part? Un. You know, you add un and you form the opposites. So, you say do and you say undo. Okay? You say kind and you say unkind. Okay. You say happy, you say unhappy. You say comfortable and you say uncomfortable. With just one addition, you get the opposite and you get a new word. Okay. And this is not peculiar only to English. Okay. This is not peculiar only to English. We have the, these processes even in other languages in Telugu, in Hindi, in all languages of the world. Can you give me an example of uh, a word plus word from Telugu? Raja Marg. So, you have Raja Marg. Okay? Right? Can you give me something like un? Okay? Something with un, something which makes the opposite. Come again louder, please. Utsahamu, nirutsahamu. Ah, utsahamu, nirutsahamu. Give me something. Asakti, anasakti. Asakti, anasakti. Come on, please. Only two people know their mother tongue in this class. Give me something in Hindi, in Tamil, in Telugu, in Sanskrit. Ya parichit, aparichit, shruti, ashruti, you know, there are lots. Yeah. So, that is one way of, or you can have, you know, yeah. you can, and we will we'll, we'll look at them in some detail. At the moment, I am just trying to get you to see that in all languages of the world, we have many of these processes, maybe not all of these processes, okay, but many of these processes. Say, for example, look at the next word. You know, we had happy and unhappy. Unhappy is the opposite of happy. But what is encourage? Is it the opposite of courage? It is putting courage. If courage is noun, then encourage is a verb. You know, you encourage someone. It is a verb, okay, which gives courage. You know, we again make a new word out of an old word, 
using a little part, using things like n, un, or for example, cup. Okay, how much do you want? I want a cup full. Okay, so you know you don't have to say a liter. You don't have to say measure the exact milliliter. You can just say a cup full. Another word, you know, a, a word plus a particle, a word plus a little thing added. Similarly, you know, beautiful, a walking, walk plus ing, a lowest. It is still, you know, you want to say extreme low, you want to say maximum in low. So, you do not say maximum in low. What do you say? Lowest. You add something. Similarly, you know, with in all languages, in, in our languages also, we have this kind of thing. You know, what is the maximum of low in Telugu? Laguttam, Nimnutam, Nimnutamu, okay. Kanistamu, Garistamu. Or Kanistamu, okay, right. Highest? Garistamu. Okay, Uchatamu, Mahatamu, okay. You know, we, we have them all. Personal, person and al. How do you say that in Telugu? In Hindi? So, you have Vyakti and you have Vyakti Gata. How do you say that in Telugu? Personal, this is this is his personal property. Vyakti Gata, you know Vyakti and you add a Gata. Okay? Scientific, so we have Vigyan and in Telugu from Vigyan what do we get? Sanketika. Vigyanika. Yeah. Okay? All you know, the point here is, the point here is that the number of words may differ. Nobody knows for exact, for sure, how many words does, an e, does each language have. We make a general reckoning. We say English has 500,000 words. We say French has 125,000 words. We say Sanskrit has this x and y. Okay? But all of these languages have new word formation devices. Sometimes we also borrow words from other languages. Okay? We will talk about later in the course, last module of the course, we will talk about language contact, borrowing, variation, what is not yet predictable by rule, we will look at them as well. But even without borrowing, all natural languages have processes, have particles have resources with which they form new words. Okay? We will on this course, in this module, look at some of these processes, how new words are formed in natural languages. But what is a word? Can you give me a definition of word? Try, you may not be right that does not matter. What matters is that you tried, we will look at them. Okay, who will like to say? Raise your hand please. Okay. Three ladies first, one by one. Come, give me the definition. Uh, a word is a combination of sounds. A word is a combination of sounds. Suppose I This is a combination of sounds. Is it a word? Is it a word? We do not know, okay. but an essential condition for word is that it has some sounds, okay. but that is not adequate. Any other definition please? Yes. Can you, yeah, please, can you speak slowly into the camera, please? Would you like them to stand? Would you like him to stand up? Support. Okay, can you please stand up and speak slowly? A word is a combination of word, uh, letters that has some meaning attached to it, which is accepted by the majority. Uh, that is written, a combination of letters that is accepted by majority. You know, these are, these are conditions and these conditions apply to 
writing and accepted by majority, who counts? Did you have a, an election and you decided that in Telugu, we will call a railway station and a station amu, a teacher a teacheru. <laughs> so, we have not taken, but you are generally you are right, a word has these aspects as well. It has, it has a graphic form, just as it has a, just as it has a phonological form, just as it has sounds, similarly it also has a written shape. In some, you know, there are languages which are not yet written and more importantly as you rightly said, a word also has a social approval, you know. So, sounds, sounds, graphics, social approval, meaning, all of these things are essential to word, sounds, graphics, social approval, meaning, yet they are not enough, because you know we do not know who approves. There are sometimes words which go without approval. There are sometimes words in nearly every language, nearly every language has words which are called taboo words, right? Bad words. When you uttered them as a child, your mother gave you a good slap or a good scolding when you were two or three or four, okay? and yet you learn them. You learn everybody has a vocabulary of bad words, though nobody has been taught those words. Am I right? Say yes or no, please. Yes. How do you get them? Okay. See, this is the beauty of, you know, this is the beauty of social psychology. All of us learn bad words. I hope you don't. <laughs> okay. So you know, social approval again is a very elusive thing. We do not know. Given to government of India, there would be no word like Naxalite. Given to Naxalites, there will be no word like government of India. Given to terrorists there will be nothing other than guns and bullets, okay? yet we have words. So, come on, can you give me another definition? Similar definitions abound in books, look at the screen, but none of these definitions is adequate, because some of these things cannot be defined. Maybe tomorrow somebody comes, who comes up with an adequate definition. In Sanskrit, we say, Shabdam Brahmam, okay. we say Vagartha Pratipattaye, you know, this language, speech alone is everything, entire universe is included in speech. Okay. We say word is God, in the beginning there was word okay. and word was God. We say all that, but when we come to defini defining it, we find it difficult. In the end, we agree and accept that well, word is a notion which we know generally. Okay? Word is generally an accepted notion. We will not attempt a definition. We will rather say that okay, it is a minimal free form, it can occur by itself. Call it a morpheme, okay? call it a call it a morpheme, if you like, right. This can occur by itself, okay. by and large. It, it has some meaning, it has an identity, it has a social approval, it has one or more sounds, it has one or more letters when you write it, etcetera, etcetera. Okay. But a logically correct definition is yet to be found. Okay? So, let us talk about morphemes. There are all kinds of morphemes. There is free morpheme, which can you know, we said it can occur by itself. These morphemes can occur by themselves. When you say home, it has a meaning, it does mean something. It occurs by itself. If somebody asks you, where are you going during the vacation and you can say home or 
when are you going? You can say March, it means a month. It also can mean you are walking back to Guntur or to London. Okay. It can be a verb, but it can occur by itself. Similarly, words like to, the, they can occur by themselves. But there are bound morphemes, they need other morphemes only when they can occur. If somebody asks you, where are you going? You cannot say un, you cannot say al. You, you, you know, for you to be able to use un or al, you need another word. Okay? Only then you can say, are you happy? You can say, no, I am unhappy. But you cannot just say, I am un. Can you say, I am un? Yes or no? You cannot, because un requires another bus, another word to which it can be attached. So, it is bound. Al, you just cannot say al. You will have to use something like person, you will have to use something like society. It is social, it is personal, it is logical, it is frugal, you know, you will have to have another word. Similarly, you know, particles like s, ed, er, est, you know, how, how do you find it? Can you say, I find it est? you will have to use good plus est. Then you can say, I found it to be the best, I found it to be the prettiest, I found it to be the ugliest. You need ugly and then you attach est. So, there are bound morphemes and there are free morphemes. Right? In other words, traditional grammar has also had these concepts, it is only that they have called them slightly differently. We have the concepts of uh, root and stem, you know, root, vyakti and you add twa there. So, it becomes vyaktitva. Okay. You can, you have a word like car and you add up before. So, what is becomes? Upakaram, upakaramu, apakaramu, apakara, apakaram. Okay. Or you have word plus word, root plus root. You can say raja, and Kumar, Raj Kumar. You can say Chhatra and you can say Avas, that makes you Chhatra Avas. Okay? Right? So, we, we, we have these things, we have roots or a stem plus affixation, which basically work more or less in the same manner that some are bound morphemes, they cannot occur by themselves, they need another morpheme, they need another word to which they can be attached, but there are the others which can occur by themselves and they are free morphemes or they are roots. Okay? Are we together? Very basic common sense things, you know, we witness every day. All we are trying to do is to look at the known data in a slightly organized manner. What clothes I will put in which cupboard, what books, you know, there are people who keep their books everywhere and there are a little more organized people who keep their novels on one side, dictionaries on the other, books from mathematics or calculus in yet another etcetera, etcetera. So, we are looking at data in some organized manner. In other words, how do you make a word? You make a word in one of the following ways. You can have word plus word such as airport. Can you give me another word? Air hostess, aerodrome. Can you give me other words? Word plus word? Bus stand. Bus stand, railway Bicycle. station, Bicycle. ice cream. Honeymoon. Uh, well, it, is it word plus word? Can you give it to me in Telugu, in Hindi, in Tamil, in Sanskrit? Vidyalaya Bhavan, Vidyalaya Bhavan. Mogali Rekul. Yeah, right. Can you write? Can you, can you give me? Everybody please, can you give me three words which are word plus word? Only three words, individually. You do not need to bother your, you know, the person unfortunately sitting next to you. Okay? 
give me your own three words which is word plus word. And uh, do not give me English words from Telugu, railway station, no, bus stand, no, they have already been said. Yes, that is a smart Pradhan Mantri, Vidhan Sabha. Sorry? Punyak Setra. Yeah, right. Lalita that is also word for word. Lalita Kadal. Yes. Come on, give me three. Yeah. Everyone, please. And you, you can have more than two word. You can, you can have not only word plus word, you can have word plus word plus word plus word. You can have American social history teacher. Okay? You can have inorganic physics laboratory in charge you know actually a, a great problem with a lot of science writing is that they use a string of nouns, a string of words in, in a row. So, you can have word plus word plus word. Can you give me an example of one word made out of three words? Uh, that you are bringing in off, okay, without off that is a phrase president of America, that is not a bad example but not an example for this. Sorry? Come on, please. Lots of them, you know, Bombay film industry. Yeah, dark, is there only two? Okay dark screen and dark green forest. Green. Okay. green right give me something with three words can you give it to me in telugu another can and you give it to me in telugu my god can you give it to me in hindi and in any indian language you see another sharanalayam that is two only three sharana and then alayam Okay, that is a combination. Okay. Give me. Tupuk Velle Rail. I will give you one. Vidhana Parishad Sachivalayamu. Okay, you know, all of our languages have. Actually, our languages are rich in this. Can I have your attention? Our languages are rich in this kind of compounding. You know, we have entire stotram. Girivar, you know, what, what is the, what, what is Girivar that? Girivar Prasad Reddy. Okay. <laughs> And you know entire Durga Stotram, Aigiri, Nandini, etc., etc., you go on, okay? At 10 words put together, 20 words put together to describe just one person, one kind of thing. All languages have, but you can also have word plus affix. I have given an example, boys, okay? In Hindi, you can say ladke. What would you say in Telugu? Yeah, I know Telugu word for ladies, is trilu. You the put ten words to describe a person. That doesn't make it a word, does it? No, it makes an expression. That's why I told you it doesn't make a word. That's wonderful. You are you are absolutely correct. You know what is a word? We do not know. But ten words go to make one thing. When you describe Aigiri Nandini, you know, Nanditamedini, etc., etc. You know, it goes on. It, it's an entire long. It's just a string of names. Okay, but you use them together. They behave like one word. When you say American History Teachers Association, forward, American History, you know, we have, I am a member of an association which has a long five word name, International Association of Teachers of English as Foreign Language, IATFL, International Association of Teachers of English as Foreign Language. Okay? All languages allow this kind of thing. Give me something like word plus affix. I gave you a word in Telugu, strilu, lady plus plural, ladies. Come on. Okay, general plus Lee is generally. Okay, 
and you know you, you, you can have word plus affix, you can also have affix plus word like undo, do and undo, okay, danger and endanger, courage and encourage. Okay. You can have word plus affix plus word, okay. happiness promoting or, or happiness promotion or happiness index, corruption index, so corrupt plus affix plus index. Okay. The point here is ladies and gentlemen that language is used and as we go into this course in the coming week, I will ask you to give examples from your mother tongue. Please next two, three days talk to your parents at least in these two, three days in, 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 in the proper good quality Telugu or Tamil or Hindi or Gujarati whatever you speak at home and pay attention to words, how these words are formed because I am to, uh, going to ask you to give examples. Look at these words, okay? a large number of words, theoretical, is it word plus affix? What is it? It is word plus affix. What is the next word? Okay. Each person please take any three or four of these words on your notebook and then write, is it word plus word? Is it word plus affix? Is it affix plus word? What is it? I want to you to do it dissection, like people in biosciences do dissection of flowers or leaves or insects or frogs. Okay. So dissect these words. Take about three or four, and you don't have to take everything. You can do your own and then compare with what I am doing. Okay, uh, That will be a better way of doing it. But if you feel lazy and uh, tired and do not want to tax your mind over little things, then you know. I want it this way. Okay? Can you do for some more words? Can you tell me what word you have done? Blackout. Okay. What is it? Word plus word. It is what? Blackout is word plus word. Next. Can you cover these? Uh, these are my friends. Please, as they answer. Yes. Endanger. So, what is it? It is affix plus word. Driver. Driver, what is it? Driver plus uh, uh, word plus affix. Word plus affix. Uh, into, what is it? Plus word. Uh, it is 
you, it, it, it is it is actually word plus word n plus 2 or you can say preposition plus preposition yes shopping uh, what is that shop. shop plus in so word plus affix next like. yeah what is it next yeah what is it word plus word next okay next uh, born avenue when you said okay yeah okay it is just word plus word in danger sorry what next up to date right yeah it is word plus word plus word but different kinds of words can you say what kinds of words it is preposition preposition plus noun plus word plus affix right okay plus ELS yeah how is boys hostel different from hostel boys? Word plus affix plus word. Word plus affix plus. Yeah. They are different in both formation and they are different in meaning. Both the differences are there. They are differently formed and they mean differently. The point I am making is if you look at any page of printed language, you will come across or if you look at any discourse for a couple of minutes. If you look at any discourse for a couple of minutes, you will find that they take different kinds of words. Here, here itself, here itself, they are not all the same kinds of words. Theory, it is a noun. Okay? Then you add another affix and you make it an adjective and then you add yet another affix and make it yet another kind of adjective. Here it is a noun, but this is a, it is a noun. What category is it? Noun, it is state. What are the other parts of speech? Do you remember your primary school lesson? It is an adjective. So, this is noun plus adjective. That is another way of looking at it. I have been telling you, see word plus word. Now, you can see what word plus what word. So, this is just noun plus affix plus affix but this is noun plus adjective. Whereas, in this case, this is adjective plus noun plus affix. Do you see my point? Am, am I clear to you, please? Say yes or no. Okay. There can be, you know, different kinds of combination. Actually, uh, in the next or the next, uh, the, you know, the final class, I will tell you there is no available resource which a language does not exploit to make new words. Okay? Whatever avenue, whatever opportunity is possible, languages use those opportunities, languages use those resources to create and have new words out of existing words. If you, you know, I am going to forward this, these slides to you and I will expect you to work out their formation, look at, dissect them. Is it noun plus noun? Is it noun plus affix? Is it noun plus adjective plus affix? Or how is it? It will give you some insight into the working and the formation of language. Another way of looking at these words is, are they content or function words? Say for example, when you have prepositions, can you write some prepositions on your notebook? Prepositions such as at, okay, by, in, for, from. What are these things? These are prepositions. Okay they help you make structures, they help you make structures. You want to say son dasarath does not make sense, but when you say son of dasarath, it makes sense. We have similar things in other languages as well. Do we have similar things in Telugu? Do we have a similar thing in Telugu? No? Give me an example. Give me that uh, exact Telugu translation of son of Dasratham. 
Right. Okay. The temple in the village. Give me the translation. The temple on the village in the village. Okay. Book on the table. Okay. Okay. The girl in the garden. The boy in the gutter. The boy in the gutter. Okay. In all languages, in Hindi, you can say mej par pustak. Okay. But you udyan me larki. Okay. Maha nali me larka. You know. We, we all have these things. These things are called structural words. They help you make a structure. Words like the, are you know, articles. Words like the, words like for, from, by, etc., etc. These are structure words. But there are content words. They have meaning like, you know, home, like march, like school, like college like book, like table, like go, like come, you know, they have meanings. But, you know, another way of looking at these words is through parts of a speech. Do you remember how many parts of a speech there are in English? Did you do school grammar? How many are there? Eight. Who said eight? Okay. Can you name all the eight? <laughs> Try. It does not matter if you go wrong. I know you won't. Noun. Noun. Verb. Pronoun. Verb. Pronoun. Adjective. Adjective. Yes. Adverb. Adverb. Preposition. Preposition. Conjunction. Interjection. Conjunction. Interjection. Marvelous. You see, when you move forward, others follow you. That's what we mean by you know, leaders always start alone. Okay. Right. You can have words through derivations. There are all kinds of derivations. We will talk about them in the next class. Okay. I am giving you words in a context. Can you look at these words and give me three things? What is their formation? What category of word they are? What part of a speech they are? Okay. Say for example, lots of chocolate for me to eat. So, lots is word plus affix. What word? Noun plus plural marker. Noun plus affix. Then of is preposition. Chocolates. Noun plus affix. That is noun plus plural affix. For me to eat. Preposition me. What is me? Pronoun. Not pronoun. Do not say pronoun. Say pronoun. What is it? Pronoun. pronoun. Two is preposition. Eat. What is it? Verb. Verb. Any affix there? None. Do it for the next sentence on your notebook, please. Come on, quick. Okay, don't do it for the next sentence. Do it for the first line in the next stanza. This is an English song. Everyone suddenly burst out singing. Okay. what part of a speech, what kind of formation it has. You know, all I am doing is, I am jogging you through the data. I am trying to get you to see your data. What, how many different kinds of words do we have? And we have similar things in nearly all languages that we know. Sorry, there is a mistake here. Who has done the fourth line of the second stanza? Fourth line of the second stanza. 
winging wildly across the white. Have you done the fourth line? Have you done the fourth line? Have you done the fourth line? Plus ethics, work plus ethics. Pinging is verb plus ethics. Come. Pinging. Yes. Is verb plus ethics. Well, wing, wing is a noun, but it has been used here as verb. verb. Okay. So, you see this is how language stretches its resources. Though it is a noun, you can use it as verb. How do you know it has been used as verb? Because of the fix. Is there anything other than action? How do you know it has been used as a verb? I ing there. And because that is the verb slot, okay, winging wildly. Okay. What is the next word? Wildly. Adverb. Yeah, adjective plus verb marker makes it adverb, adverb marker. Across, what is it? Preposition. Preposition. Then the white. You see, take, can you now for, for, for my sake, for the sake of this course, can you take a line, one line of any poem from Telugu or Hindi and look at, do you remember a poem from Telugu or Hindi? Okay. Now, what is what? Adjective. Vinura, verb, Vema, again, no. Okay, no affix is there. Word plus affix. Right. Okay. In, you know, take any language. You will, you will, you find these, these things there necessarily. Okay. We have in any, in any language. You know, in the songs, in the poems th that I cited. On the left, what you see on the left hand column are nouns cold, chocolate, everyone, delight, bird, freedom, but you have verbs, eat, making, burst out, you know, you have other kinds of adjectives, you have prepositions, you have a structure words, you have content words. It is only these two together that make a language. Only content word would not do, only a structure word would not do, it is their good combination that makes the language. We will tomorrow talk about affixation and word plus was compounding. Okay? Uh, basically, these are the kinds, of, there is prefix, there is suffix, there is infix, but we will talk about them uh, later, maybe tomorrow. What I will request you to do is, can I have your attention one final moment please? Can you bring me can you can I have your attention? Can you bring me four lines of a good poem, quote unquote good, from your mother tongue, other than film songs? But if you can't think of anything, then at least film songs. Okay? To the class on Monday. Right. Thank you. Have a good day. Have